So the whole point of today's video is to try to get a terrain piece to come out looking like the one in the picture here. And I don't mean how good is my Ender 3 printing. What I'm talking about is I wanted to support part of this model, but I've had problems when I hit supports on a model like this, I get supports between every crack and every brick. So let's fix that. First off, I'd like to thank all the uh, YouTubers who got me into 3D printing, as I do in every video. So please go check all these people out. They are some great YouTubers with some great videos. Very helpful to me, and I'm sure they'll be helpful to you if you haven't already seen them. And next up, since I don't really show myself in my videos, i got to pick my ugly mug that you'll look at for a few seconds just to see who I am. And thankfully, we'll, uh, I won't make you linger on this too long. We'll, we'll get by me and go right into the topic today, which is when I go to print terrain like this, and I, I once supported a model like this, and I didn't realize it, but after it printed out, there was little miniature supports between every single brick in my model like this. And it was a disaster trying to pick them out. I, I was there with my exacto trying to razor them out. And in fact, I got so frustrated and it was taking so long and it was so hard to do that I actually threw the model out and reprinted it without supports. But then I had my overhangs weren't so good and I had string. I had a lot of cleanup to do anyway. So I was really frustrated. And then it took me a while to realize there is, aside from being able to place manual supports by virtue of some other programs you can add into Cura, there's a support blocker. And I never even really clicked on the button there, never really thought about it, um, which is, is to my, you know, mistake, because you should really explore every program. And here I am, I'm pretty good at printing on my, uh, on my Ender 3, and I get great results. You know, all my videos so far have been about resin, but I was getting great results on my Ender before I got my Photon. So I thought, let me get back to my roots here and, and start exploring Cure, now that I'm a way more experienced printer. So I'm looking at this model, and basically, I rotate it around till I see, I want to get the place where I have the least amount of supports that I need. And I see a kind of big overhang where these windows are, or whatever it is. And what I want to do is, I want to support those. But I know that if I support them, it's going to be a mess because the supports are going to go in between all this all the little sections like I said so looking at it I know where I want my supports and I also know where I don't want my support so here I've supported it everywhere and if you can see it's a little hard to see because they make it all the same color but if you look in between each brick you can see support material so this is what I was talking about so I support this whole structure because I let's say I don't on this particular model I don't trust my bridging to handle those those windows or openings properly so I want to support them so let's say it's, let's say you say you might say oh it, it would work on this model let's say it's a bigger overhang you don't think it's going to work just for example the point of this video is to teach you something new so I'm looking at it and there's so this is the kind of cleanup that made me throw my model out last time and it's funny because I haven't really been messing with my Ender Three or Cure it's just been pumping out basic terrain for the last four months literally nonstop and I haven't had to have a model like this that had bricks that also needed support. So getting back to this model which I'm making, which is a, a model of a stable by Cast and Play, it's the first time I've run into, out of all the terrain I've been printing in a few months, something that I felt needed support. And then I realized, crap, I can't go through that again where I get support between every single brick like I'm highlighting here because, again, it you know made me throw my model out last time. And that's not really a good thing. So I really want to support that area, as I said. So what we're going to do is... Something that, believe it or not, after six months of very successful printing, I had never actually tried the button called uh, Support Blocker. And I, honestly, somehow I don't even think it registered on my brain that it was there because it was maybe just because it was something I never needed. And also, I didn't really know how it worked. So once you click on the Support Blocker, you have to click on the model itself. If you click support blocker and you click off the model, it will not place a support blocker structure. Once you've clicked the model like I have, and then you click the support blocker and click, you get this cube. Everything in this three-dimensional cube will not get supports. So what I want to do here is I want to change the shape of this cube. So I want to cover all the bricks where I don't want supports to print, and I want to leave open the area I do want to support. So I'm, I'm going to raise this shape it you know make it fit exactly what I want in terms of stopping supports so I don't want them between any of those bricks there 
So I pull it through the model. I want to raise it up a little bit just in case for any reason the bottom has any supports needed anywhere. I don't want to mess with the bottom. So I'm just going to raise it up a tiny little bit off, off, the, off the surface just so it makes sure it doesn't screw with any, somehow my raft or anything like that. I don't know what it might do. So I'm, I'm going to lift it up at just a tiny little bit so that uh, it doesn't mess with it. First, I'm making, I want to make sure it's wide enough to cover just stop those cracks from getting support structures in them. But I want to leave it, the area that I do want to support, I want to leave as much of that free as possible so that it can, uh, so it can be well supported because that's the whole purpose of doing this. So once I get that cube into these now long, thin rectangle, it almost looks like the obelisk from, uh, from an old movie. I can't remember what it is now. Oh, my God. Uh, Space 1999, I think. No, it's not. Uh, okay, ignore this part of the video. So anyway, once I get this slightly off the ground so I make sure it won't mess with my raft or my support down there, because look, underneath, believe it or not, there's... That area is not flat. There's a little bit of support needed, so I definitely don't want to mess with that. It might need actual support, so make sure I lift this block up. Then what I'm going to do from there is I'm going to drop another support block, and then I'm going to shape it to cover this whole middle section. Whoops, I, there I shaped the model. That's easy. You always go back to your, your edit undo button and then fix that easily. And oh, I didn't click on the model. I, mean, I didn't click on the cube directly, so I had to undo again. Now I'm on the cube. Okay, I'll get it. Bear with me. Well, it's good for you to see me make even these little mistakes because when you're clicking around, this is this is what happens to all of us. No one just does everything perfectly, I don't think. So now I'm widening this to cover all the all the bricks. I don't want the support material between. I'm going to uh, lift it up off the ground to make sure that it uh, doesn't again interfere with the bottom of my model, which does look like it needs a little bit of support. Plus, like I said, since my raft is there, I definitely don't want to somehow screw up my raft. So I'm lifting this so the, the bottom you know, few millimeters uh, is not covered. Now I need to... Uh, okay, I hit the wrong button again. See, you're getting to see me make lots of gaffes. Now I'm going to widen it so it covers uh, through to the back, no problem. And then I'm going to make sure that it's slightly lifted up. And now I'm going to place the third support block. And again, just changing the... For some reason, these are a little fiddly. I, maybe I should have used the percentage buttons. But I, I like dragging the sliders, even though sometimes I make little goofs and it's frustrating. But it's not that bad. Uh, I'm getting the hang of it. See, you're actually watching me almost as I learned this myself. Um, this is only the second model I tried this on. And, and now I feel like dumb that I didn't know how to do this. So hopefully, if anyone else hadn't used this, Hopefully this will help you to get much cleaner prints with a lot less cleanup time if you have something that gets these little small support structures, whether it's between bricks or even on some models. I'm going to actually make another video where I show this on a model where some areas of the models don't need support but might get support, and you don't want all that extra cleanup. Uh, and, and, and we all know how thin, delicate stuff can sometimes break when you're taking the supports off. Maybe I can use this technique to avoid putting too many supports in areas where it doesn't need it, where, where it's going to end up breaking off part of the model so I'm gonna I'm gonna work on some minis with this technique and then post a video for you guys to see if it if it can help you get better results on your miniatures as well so now I'm doing this top portion I want to make sure I lift this up so the bottom of this cube is above the bottom of the let's call it the roof of that window the bottom portion of the roof so that it doesn't uh, doesn't stop my support from adhering the whole point is to support those little openings so I'm gonna move this so it's basically intersecting as little of the back part as possible and leaving as much of the area I want to support open as possible. So I'm moving it back as far as I can to avoid getting anything in those cracks. Now if I want to be really precise, I could have broken this up, broken this up into two support squares, one for the little top section and one for the little bottom section. Uh, now I'm just looking at the prepare view just to see what's not getting supports all at once. And then I'm ready to slice it. And then I want to, after I slice, I want to make sure in my, I'm going to go to my preview view and make sure I don't see support structures in any of those cracks anymore, but that I do see support structures where I want them, which is underneath and uh, in the window opening, supporting the, the huge overhangs, the huge bridges there. So now we're processing the layers and let's see how we did. Okay, so we see supports where we need them for sure. And now looking between the bricks, awesome. I don't see any support structure, none of that crappy little material I was trying to pick out. 
and underneath you see my raft is going to print okay and a little bit of support where it's needed under there all going to print so this means we've been very successful and now we can go and print it and 12 hours later so i'm going to print it overnight come back the next day now this one this this model you're looking at is on the printer the very first one i did came off the printer so i'm going to show you pics of that um, with the support structure and i'll also show you pics after i pulled those support structures off so that's coming up in just a few seconds now i use the exact same technique as i did here and again this is not to show you how well my inter ender printer doesn't print but this is to show you how i didn't have to deal with any of that support crap stuck in between the bricks i was able to actually just pull the supports off the window area and boom it's done and i think it came out well compared to what i've done before where the support structures got in between the bricks this come out amazing for me you know a little bit of sanding a little bit of filling a little bit of heavy priming and you won't even know this was done on fdm i don't think by the time i'm done even though my ender gives a couple lines here and there i can pretty sure i can make those disappear on my final print so i do hope you enjoyed watching i do hope that you learned something and i look for my other videos i'm going to do a ton of videos on fdm printing to help you guys Again, thanks for watching. Please like and please subscribe. Thanks.